Hello and welcome to the uh, sixth and final session in the ESM 101 series. So in this case, it's ESM 106. And here we're talking about trends, reports and queer reviewers. So what are we going to talk about? Well, how do we bring this together into content? What are queries? What are query reviewers? And why is it not a data monitor? What is a report? And how do trends relate to this as well? So without further ado, let's jump into this. So how do we look at things? You know, we need to pick through some elements. We need to look at how we build things together. And, and we can see, clearly see here with uh, you know a, a Lego model, it's a combination of lots of individual parts that we build out something much more sophisticated and complex. So when we want to build something like a report, uh, we'd have to start with a query. The queries are going to be looking at the particular sets of the fields and the criteria that we want to build out for our query viewer trend or report. The query is the key element here and that's how we build out uh, this particular component, this mechanism of how we want to capture and view the data, uh, whether it's a report, a trend or a query viewer itself. So we all start with a query. So the queries are the secret source here, and, and it's relevant across everything. Um, so do we have a specific query language for this? N no, we still use filters. The filter is the key element here, and it's reusable even in a report, even in uh, the trends as well. So the, the query is the key part that allows us to define the conditions that we want to meet. And again, we could have seen those queries with regards to active channels or rules as well. And we also want to define the fields that are going to be available for us to view within that report trend or query viewer. So queries can be used for searching on different elements, including lists, actors, assets, cases, events themselves, notifications, uh, session lists, and even trends. Typically, in most cases, we're going to be doing things like looking at events and looking at things like active lists as well, typically as part of report or query viewer as well. So. If you know SQL, SQL, uh, this will look very, very similar. The, the, the mechanisms, the language, the process is very, very familiar. So the fields uh, tab, when we create a query, we're looking at this select. That's very similar to SQL. We're looking to group by a particular uh, set of data to summarize it. And we're looking to order to, to have some sequencing to this to, to order the data that we want to have. So within the select, you're typically looking at uh, some additional functions. Maybe you want to do a sum of the aggregated event count. I calculate the total number of uh, events that occurred. Uh, we want to do the, the uh, particular day from the, the actual timestamp. And, and we look at the functions within the select statement to then group by to then automatically populate the data we want to use. So select can be also use variables as well, which we haven't really touched on. But you know, just bear in mind that, that, that you can also use variables as part of that select process. So the select process allows us to select to identify the, the data we want to use for the query itself. Query viewers. Now, why is this not a data monitor? You may see a query viewer look very, very similar to and present data in a very similar way that a uh, data monitor does. But a query viewers make a call against the database to pull the events. The query viewers do require a, a drill down to be built, but it allows you to leverage those queries. It does not evaluate the events. It's not doing a calculation. It's not doing a sum or aggregation, and it will not create correlated events. Now, remember, that's what a data monitor can do. It's streaming the data into, according to the filter, into the data monitor. It's then doing some calculations, aggregations, statistics, uh, calculations on that data, and then presenting the data and making it available for, for to the dashboard itself. That's what a data monitor does. All a query viewer does is run the query to get the data to allow it to be displayed. Both can be placed in dashboards, but you can see that both can do things in a very different way. Query viewers are a very efficient way of displaying data into a chart. A data monitor is a very efficient way to do statistical calculations and to identify and trigger events out of those statistical calculations, which a query viewer cannot do. Uh, when to use a query viewer? Well, if you don't need to do analysis, if you want to have the ability to do the drill down, great. Um, but you just want to see the information. Uh, that's a, a query viewer is a great way of doing things. A data monitor will allow you to do much more, though. 
Let's just go back to reports again. So typically reports are used for showing the boss value, showing the high level uh, relevant information that we want to present to our management and to our senior executives. So typically you want to be starting from a template to define how many uh, and what are the elements that we want to lay out in the table. We then attach that query that we've defined to those particular charts and tables. We define the X and Y axis because it's a report uh, and for the tables what what do we want to put into the labels and then we do what we need to do we can have a different query for each individual table and you can have a very complex report with you know, one two three four even uh, more number of actual queries in that report itself to summarize that data so that's not a problem just use the templates and then attach the queries to the individual components, the charts and the tables within that particular template. And then of course, each one of those queries is then whatever you need it to be, but driving the select statements and the, uh, the grouping of the data that we want to have into that table or chart. A uh, little bit about trends. Now, this is where we want to be doing data analysis over a long term. Now, you can technically run a report for, say, a month, a year, or even longer, but a trend is a much more efficient way of doing things. What is a trend? A trend is a way to capture information and to put it into a table for longer term processing. So in this example, we can see that we can create a query, we can define what we want to to, to select as part of that query and do some uh, grouping and sorting and calculations accordingly. We can then put that data into a trend and then have that scheduled to run over a particular time period. So the query then runs, selects the data, and then puts that into the table for a longer period of time, a month, a year, or even longer, and it will update that information. So when you come to run the report, that we want to view that data, we run it on the trend itself, not on the base data that generated it. What we don't necessarily want to be able to do is to run a query across billions upon billions of events. It's always gonna be much simpler to run a query against a limited number and a smaller table of trend entries that's got you that summary data that's done on every day, for example. So it it's allow, allows you to do much more efficient way of doing things from longer term reporting without having to search through those billions of events you're just searching through the limited trend data that's been created against the schedule that you've got and capture that data in the first place. Uh, and that's a very quick run through of the reports, queries, templates, and trends and how we would use them. Thank you very much.